I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary and welcome to Training Tuesday for May 2nd, 2023. I have a special episode for you this week. It's of our false water cobra, Vashti, Hydrodynastes gigas. Everybody always seems excited when I show videos of Vashti and she is one of my mom's favorite snakes. All the way back in 2020, I started working with a graduate student and her professor at West Liberty University on a snake training project. And that was Michelle Williams and her professor, Dr. Zach Lofman. Michelle was going to do her graduate thesis on training false water cobras to do a shifting behavior, which is a cooperative care behavior common in zoos. And it's becoming more common, not only with pet animals and in veterinary and laboratory settings, but in pretty much any facility where you have animals, if you can get them to cooperatively shift in and out of enclosures or cooperatively get on scales or cooperatively position in certain ways so that you can manage them better, that's a lot less stressful for them and for you and it's safer for them and for you. So she was going to work with 28 false water cobras to teach them a shifting behavior to shift out of their primary habitat into temporary holding and then back into their primary habitat. Well, I had already successfully done that with my Morelia Bradley, And so I started meeting twice a week with Michelle and working with this group of snakes. And Dr. Loafman sent me a false water cobra here at Behavior Education so that I could work with her as a test animal on different procedures and methods in order to better coach Michelle with the animals she was working with there at the university. So we did this in 2020 and in 2021. And finally, in 2022, our paper got published in the journal Animals and it is an open access journal. So anybody is free to read this paper. And so do I still use this shifting behavior to get Vashi in and out of her enclosure three years later? Yes, the answer is yes, I do. It's a very safe and non-dramatic way for me to move that false water cobra and I still practice it with her. I don't always take her out to feed her and I don't always shift her out to clean. If she's in her cave or if she's in her hide and she is pretty dormant and she's not gonna come out, I can spot clean pretty easily and do waters. And sometimes I feed her in her enclosure. But if she's awake and active and I need to get in that enclosure and clean, or if I'm gonna feed her, I use that as an opportunity to practice her training. So the question is, after all this time, does she still remember her shifting behavior? And the answer is yes, Vashti can still do the shifting behavior that she learned several years ago when we were doing the research study. So I've just shifted from using a crate or a tub because she's gotten so much bigger and I need more flexibility in how I arrange things to using a soft-sided dog or cat or small animal crate. And this way I can unfold it and I can put one door adjacent to her enclosure door and I can unzip it as much as I need to, to allow her out of her enclosure and into the crate. And then I can unzip one end, the end I'm standing on, and I can stick the target through. And I can deliver the reinforcement once she's inside the crate. And the flexibility of having the soft-sided crate with the zippers means that I can open the ends, um, whether the end that she's entering or the end that I'm using to target her and reinforce her, as much or as little as I need to. And because there are doors and openings on more than one side of this crate, I can change its direction and move it around to position it exactly how I need it to be positioned in order to get her safely in and out. And I can also flip it upside down if I need to have the doors um, flip up or down the other way. I affix it so that the zippered doors, the mesh doors flip down and so that I can have her come up and into the crate and that I can have... Um, the bottom of the crate still covering underneath her enclosure so she doesn't sneak under there. I can zip it up. I can move it with her in it. It's very light. She's used to it and not afraid of it because we've used this many times by now. 
she was given a 75 gram mega blend repti link which she has already eaten she eats really quickly it doesn't take her long to swallow the food this way i'm able to now lift her up and leave her out of my way and get her off the floor so the cats aren't bothering her. And then that just gives me as much time as I need to do enclosure maintenance. Now, last time I did this shifting behavior, I did a 100% enclosure clean out for her and gave her new substrate. This time, it still looks fairly clean. She likes to use the bathroom way at the back, and this is a three foot deep or 36 inch deep enclosure. So I have to get my body in there to spot clean I have to reach in and get that big pool out if it needs to be cleaned. So things like that are obviously easier to do if she's not in it. It doesn't look too bad today. And so all I'm going to do is spot clean. I'm going to re-moisten this soil. I'm going to replace the water in her drinking bin there. And I will refresh her pool water because it doesn't look like she soiled in her pool or anything. So I'm just going to add more water to her pool to make it filled to the top. But she has a six foot long by three foot deep by 18 inch high enclosure. And unfortunately, I got a false water cobra that doesn't like to climb. I had her in an arboreal or semi-arboreal enclosure and she just did not ever use the vertical climbing space. So she is in this little bit lower enclosure that is wider and longer and she utilizes all of that space. So now it's time to get her back in. I've cleaned and, and refreshed her water and moistened the soil. And so now I've positioned this a little bit differently so that it's easy for me to shift her back in. And because of the sliding doors, I'm able to slide the doors to meet in the middle and put the target and my arm through the back door and then ask her to come in through the front door. And I'm able to position this crate and unzip it just enough so that if she um, sees the target and comes up and over the lip of where I've got the crate unzipped, she can just go right into her enclosure and I can deliver her reinforcement and we don't have any drama trying to get her back in. That all went very well. She just left her tail out a little bit, which isn't a problem. This is about the only time I ever touch her is if something like this happens and I have to pick her tail up a little bit to get her back in. Now she has been free roaming this room before. I have picked her up to put her away when she's been free roaming. She hasn't been bad, but I just seldom handle her. Uh, she can get quite flighty. She's not always that way, but this is an easy way to manage her by the target training allowed her to learn how to shift in and out without any drama for me, without any drama for her. And yes, she still remembers it after all this time. <music>